I've been saying for the past few years that most casual off-road lovers simply don't have the skills, or the height, or even the need for a big and heavy expensive adventure bike, and that they would be much better off with something smaller, more practical, more down-to-earth. Unfortunately, nowadays, common sense is not a common commodity, and bikes like that became so rare we began calling them unicorns. Today I will be testing the Fantic Caballero Rally 500, and my goal is to find out if this bike has what it takes to be your next all-rounder. Hello adventurers, my name is Diogo Guerra and this is Off-Road Of Course. The Fantic Caballero 500 Rally is a scrambler, and as such it seems like the quintessential trap for the modern hipster engineered with all the right things in all the right places to excel on the most daring expeditions to Starbucks. Truth is, the bike is not bad at all, and despite not being a real rally bike like the sticker suggests, I have been riding this thing for over a week and it far exceeded all my expectations, both on and off-road. This bike in particular belongs to my friend Philippe Mafalde. Thank you, Philippe, for lending me the bike. This plastic here is a modification, it's a bit taller than the stock one. These end guards are not stock, and this pouch, besides, I mean, despite being from uh, Fantic, it's an original part, it's an extra that you can buy after the bike. Regarding its general specifications, the bike is Euro 5 compliant. It costs around 6,500 euros, and the engine is a single cylinder 450 cc made by Zongshan. It is liquid-cooled, fuel-injected, it has six speeds, and it delivers 43 horsepower, more than enough for off-road enjoyment and a mechanically healthy cruise speed of about 120 km per hour. The tank takes 12 liters, which gives the Caballero an average range of 260 km. The brakes are well-dimensioned, and they are made by a respected Brembo subsidiary. They have a strong bite, and the ABS inspires a lot of confidence. And by the way, you can turn it off by clicking this button right here. One of my favorite features is definitely the weight. 160 kilos ready to ride, which is a, right out of the gate a completely different experience than any big adventure motorcycle that you may have tried before. My second favorite feature are the suspensions. Both the forks and the shock are three-way adjustable, which is unusually generous. This means you can set the spring preload, the compression and the rebound. And this was extremely useful to me, because I felt that the suspensions were a bit too stiff and by softening them a bit, it, uh, the bike became much more plush and comfortable off-road. The travel is also reasonable, 200 mm front and back, which is about the same as the respected Yamaha Tenere 700. The wheels are 19 inch and 17 inch, not the best setup for off-road, but a very smart way to keep the bike short despite the long suspensions. The seat is cushy, it feels comfortable and even for the pillion. I rode a little bit with my girlfriend Cristina and she loved it. The seat height is about 86 cm, which is in the same ballpark as the Royal Anfield Himalayan, the KTM 390 Adventure or even the KTM 890 Adventure, which are regarded as good motorcycles for short riders. Generally, I like the bike ergonomics. When you're sitting down, it feels really good. I like the open wide handlebar. It really makes all the scrambler feel come together. Uh, and even off-road, I spent most of the time sitting down. However, when riding a bit more aggressively and I stood up, I immediately found one of this bike's biggest flaws, which is this plastic right here that hits the inside of your boot every time you stand up, forcing you to place your foot in a, in a wrong angle, which is very bad for your body positioning. And I think that this is a bit unnecessary, because like the distance between the plastic and the exhaust, there's enough distance for the plastic to be made a little bit different. I don't think this is a deal breaker. If I bought this bike, I would definitely just change the plastic or cut it or, you know, do something. Uh, it's a shame, but it's not deal breaker. It's like not buying a house because you don't like the kitchen counter color. You just change it later. The Caballero has a very attractive design, no doubt about that. 
and I think Fantic found an interesting balance between making this bike look pretty and well built, while at the same time keeping it lightweight and low cost. It's cheap and functional without looking too cheap and basic. One thing to have in mind is that due to the design of the seat and exhaust and the lack of aftermarket solutions, it's not that easy to transport a lot of luggage on this bike. So if you are planning to buy one for long-term adventure, moto camping kind of things, make sure to plan ahead for that problem. Right, and now that the bike is properly introduced, let me take it for a spin and show you how it feels to ride it. So, what can we say about the, the Cavallero around town? Well, the engine is definitely interesting. The bike is, you know, it's very maneuverable, the brakes are good, the handling is good. And I think I like the overall feel, like it has a grunt, the engine, it, it, it does not vibrate too much, but it has like this feeling. It's good, it goes well with its scrambler looks. The looks are also a good, a big part of it. Like people look, it's a bike that catches people's attention. Uh, so, you know, you feel well riding it. You kind of feel like James Dean or something. On the highway, it's different because um, 120 is probably the, the limit of where this engine likes to be and you don't have any air uh, aerodynamic protection so you don't really feel well above 110 I'd say yeah the bike can move <laughs> the bike can move I mean one has to be pleased with this bike since I, I set the suspensions to be a bit softer because the bike felt uh, too firm in the beginning like too, I would say, ready to race needlessly now it's softer, so now it means I can just sit down most of the time just sit down, accelerate and enjoy because it has so much torque or enough torque you can ride a lot with the accelerator so you can like power slide through the turns you can ease the front wheel, let's see this sand here. Yeah, easy. I mean, that, and then because it's a, a low bike, I think even if you're not a good rider, you can go on a sandy section like this and uh, you know, feel, feel comfortable just <laughs> doing what you must, you know, to keep moving, I guess. So look at this, this is like going uphill, sand, bumpy <laughs> and this tractor just woo just you know <laughs> just found its way to the top and you can do this like you know with so much disregard like you, can, you know you can always stop the bike from crashing just by putting your feet down not a racing bike but a very fast bike that you can take anywhere you don't you know you can go on any adventure or a uh, dual sport event or track or whatever and be probably one of the fastest guys there. Overall, I'm very pleased with the Fantic. Around town it's a very fast and versatile motorcycle and the ladies love it. If you take it on a curvy road, the engine, the brakes and the handling will certainly put a smile on your face. And if you take it off-road, it's surprisingly capable. The suspensions never bottomed out, even after I made them softer. The bike feels stable and concise, easy to handle, really nice. Uh, the engine, it doesn't like to be in the wrong gear, but if you keep that in mind, it will never let you down. Nevertheless, if you're not happy with it, there is a, a heavier flywheel you can order and also a different ECU map, which they say that makes this excellent bike even better. Long story short, it's a bike that if you are a good rider, you can really have fun with it and be fast if you want to. If you are not, then it's low enough and forgiving enough to take you anywhere while you feel relaxed with a smile on your face. And in that sense, it reminds me a lot of the Himalayan, but in a good way. This feels like the super Himalayan.
and if you ever never heard of it there's my review about that bike i recommend it and some of you perhaps are wondering like why do i like this bike so much and not the ktm 390 adventure for some reason the ktm it didn't strike me as a bike that a, a, a newbie rider would feel immediately comfortable and immediately able to ride fast the bike is strange it's reactive it's twitchy you never feel completely safe with it and this one it's different it's lighter than the ktm has two or three extra centimeters of suspension travel more adjustability uh, somehow it just works better that's all i can say Regarding the price, 6,500 euros, I have mixed feelings about it because on one hand there seems to be more than enough performance and quality and aesthetics to justify that number. On the other hand, I have no idea about the long-term reliability and market value of these bikes. Uh, the, the, the maintenance interval is fine, 5,000 kilometers. The valve check interval, not so much. Fantic, the manufacturer, has, has been around for 50 years and I've heard that getting parts for these motorcycles is not hard at all. But I, I feel that I have been wrong about this, that I've been fooled before by these underdog brands, so I really don't know what to think. One thing is for sure, this bike is as great a great riding experience, a great ratio of smiles per mile and I think it's a bike definitely to consider if you like off-road but you don't want a big and heavy adventure bike. Maybe you are a beginner, maybe you are a short rider. I'm not saying that this is the best bike in the world but definitely one to consider. And guys, now I think I'm done. Thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to like, to subscribe, to hit the thingy and to share. See you next week and happy rides! Mm -hmm.